Welcome to Island Baptist Church's Bible Study in the Acts of Jesus, Lesson 9, A Spirit-Filled Church, Part 2. Good morning, everybody, or afternoon, wherever you find yourself. I uh, want to welcome you to our ninth study here in the book of Acts. Uh, not the last time we were together, but the second to last time we were together, we were looking at a thing called the Spirit-Filled Church. We're going to add a part two to that. So we're going to be again here at the end of uh, Acts, Acts chapter 2 verses uh, 42 through the end of the, of the chapter here in just a second. And, um, and I, I told you last time the overriding principle of, of the church, the character of the church was the, um, the fact of community. Community was, played such a huge role uh, in, in their practice and, and it's difficult to overstate the, this practice and principle, not only in the New Testament church, but also in the scriptures, we looked at these uh, several of these last time. I'm going to add a couple more to them. First of all, uh, as far as community is concerned, and, and the importance of community in the church, uh, God Himself is community. Remember, He's uh, He's a Trinity, uh, triune nature. He's the co a community of three. If you think of it that way, uh, when when God first created the, the the planet and all the things in it, He created Adam, and the only thing bad about the early creation was that Adam was by himself. And so he creates Eve, and Adam and Eve become a community of two. And then again in the New Testament, when he recreates through Christ and through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and we have this, this uh, again, this creation of community. The Holy Spirit, what does he do? He draws them together. We're going to be reading that in just a second. Uh, Jesus stated, as we saw, the most convincing proof of the truth of the gospel is the perceptible oneness of his followers. The perceptible oneness of of his followers is the most convincing proof of the truth. He said this, is that they may be made perfect in one. Remember that there in John 17? That the world might know, as he speaks to the Father, that the world might know that you have sent me. How's the world going to know that, that, that Jesus has been sent through the church? He's gonna, they're going to see it in our perceptible oneness, in, 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 the, in, the, in their ability to see our oneness. There's another one. Just again, community. Uh, you can think of the Ten Commandments as nothing more than ten rules on community. The first, the first four are how to have community with God, and the first six, how to have community with others. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is a community prayer. Don't you know how the Lord's Prayer goes? How does it start? Our Father, not my... Jesus said, the, the disciples said, teach us how to pray, and so Jesus says, okay, here's how you pray. He, he didn't say, my father. He didn't say, I mean, most, how many prayers start out with our? So he, he, all the way through is this enforcement of, of, of community, of being together. Um, Jesus also, another thing, a sixth thing, heaven is going to be extremely, uh, an extreme place of community. Consider, consider what this says in John 14 too. And you're familiar with this. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. I know some of you have the King James Version, and, and we've always read there's many mansions. And, of course, in the old English of the King James was written in, this uh, mansions meant something very different than it does today. We think of a mansion, we think of these individual houses that are set up on, on acreage and all this kind of stuff. And that is not what Jesus was saying. Uh, what he was saying, a better, better translation, or a better, I should say, modern translation, understanding the way we modern people think. It was good for the people in the 1600s to say mansions. It's not good for the people in the 2020s to say uh, mansions. Uh, better to say, as it says here in the New American, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. Think of it as apartments, uh, condos, uh, rooms, but they're together. Notice there's only one house. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. So, if that were not so, he says, I would have told you, for I go there to prepare a place for you. It, it's, uh, it's a place of community. It's a place of togetherness. We're really going to be together there. Again, community has such a high priority on God's list. And, and, and just another thing to enforce all this. What's the bare minimum number that Jesus said, this, this special number uh, that requires his special presence. Do you remember that? What was it? Where two or more are gathered in my name. So notice again, what is he enforcing? Get together. Come together. Not Lone Ranger. Not by yourself. Not to say that you can't have those things. But again, what is he pushing us towards? Not, not 
individuality, not uh, uh, hermit life. Uh, Christianity is pushing us into this community of being together. And it's difficult to overstate the importance of, of the, this practice of community for the New Testament church. And um, alarming, I would say, to see the trends of the modern church and, and of course, uh, take out the past two months of, uh, of uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 stuff. I mean, all that notwithstanding, the trends up until now, up until then, have been disturbing. They really have. Uh, walking away from community, more and more individuality, even in, in our expression of church. We've brought the world's mindset into our churches and our idea of church is degenerated in something more or less like a uh, like a spiritual store. Uh, we, we think along these lines. When, when we need food, what do we do? We go to the grocery store. When we uh, need entertainment, we go to the movies. Uh, when we need exercise, we go to the health club. When we need spirituality, where do we go? Now we go to the church. Uh, but we treat it like we're shopping. Like we're consumers. And there's a product. And uh, it's a far cry from oneness. And we suffer from a pervading mindset that basically is present among uh, more and more believers uh, here in America. Here's the mindset, namely, and it sounds very spiritual, but it really, by the way we're applying it, it really is not. Here, here's what we say. All I need is God. Now, that's again, sounds very spiritual and, and on a certain degree in a correct, correct application. That is true. All, all you need is God. And, and by the way, Adam could have said the same thing. He's in the garden. He's got a beautiful place. Got all these animals. He's got a perfect relationship with God. He could have said, and it is true, all I need is God. But when God looked down and saw Adam by himself, God says, no, you need someone else. You need Eve. And so he created all I need is God. It sounds, sounds pretty good, like pretty good theological stuff until you read the fine print, which is written in our mentality. Our mentality simply is uh, all I need is God and I don't need you. I don't need anyone else. I don't need you and I, I don't need anyone else. And the, res the result of this, listen, mindset, and it's a serious thing, is this come and go church attendance and this non-committal philosophy. Uh, it's on the increase among us. And as we're going to see in just a bit when we get to the, to the New Testament church, the only church that we have, the only illustration we have of how to do church right is we have here the book of Acts. And they were anything but this kind of mindset. We need each other. We need to know. We need to be known. We need community. Pay careful attention to the way the early church. We've been alluding to it all the way. Let's read it. Pay careful attention to the way they operated. We're in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 and following. It says, They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of all and wonders and signs were being taking place through the apostles. And those who had, uh, those who had believed were together and had all things in common. Wow, what community. They began selling property and possessions and were sharing them with all and uh, that everyone, everyone who had need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. And they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart and praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. A lot of ways, far cry from what we call church today. It's a far cry. Scripture is quite clear. Church was never intended to be some kind of spoke uh, in a wheel of a number of things we do. It's just one of a number of things that I do. <laughs> no, that's not the New Testament church. That's not the way it was set up. That's not the way it was intended to be. Church was intended to be the hub, the very, the very center of one's life. But again, they, and, and part of our problem is, is that, and unlike them, they didn't attend church. They were the church. They didn't just go. They were. There's a huge difference. It wasn't just one part of their lives. It was the center of their lives. And everything branched out from that. Everything was predicated on that. Uh, look, look carefully at, at the things that the early church did there in 42 and following. Uh, we've, we're, what we're doing right now is essentially covering the first one. They, were, they devoted themselves, as it says, they're steadfastly to the apostles' teachings. Now, of course, I'm not an apostle. 
but I am teaching you from the writings of the apostles, right? Now, of course, the Luke was not an apostle. He wrote the book of Acts, but he did write about the apostles, did he not? And so, so this is an essential element of the New Testament church. We have to be coming together underneath good preaching and teaching, underneath Bible teaching and, and explanation. We have to be devoted to that. It can't be just occasionally, you know, when I'm feeling bad or I need a little pick-me-up. Like I said, we, we treat church like this spiritual grocery store. When I need a little spirituality, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a participant in church. And you're not having church. That's not church. People say, well, church is not working for me. It's because you're not working it. It's not the way it was intended to be handled. Any, any church or believer that's missing out on, on that level of teaching and preaching, listen, is not having church. They're not having church. This is only one of four practices, though. So you're the, true, the, the truly right church. Again, their tendency, their tendency is to think in, that, that we're, if all we're doing is atten if, we're, if we're attending church, that we're having church. And it just simply isn't true. It just simply isn't true. Community doesn't just happen here, at least not in our churches, not, not fully uh, without community. We can't call it church. Again, here we are separated, and I know this is COVID-19, and we're stuck at our homes, and you know, Pastor Bill, you're overlaying on his thick about the whole community thing, and yet we can't have community. We're being held home uh, by law, and, uh, and here we are at Island Baptist Church. We haven't even had, a, had our public services uh, in, in a couple of months, and uh, again, trying to, trying to make the best decisions in that direction, and, and it's probably not going to be long before we open up again, but just because we're meeting on Sundays, does that mean we're having church? Again, they didn't just go to church. They were the church. Community doesn't just happen because I attend church. In fact, if that's all I'm doing, I'm really not having church. This, this is church. Let, let me show you something. This is church. Now, let me get there. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> Look at this. Ephesians 4.16. This is church. This is a church taking place. This is church functioning. Again, I think it's, it's we've shortened the term and the, our mind and we've, we have robbed ourselves of what it really means to call just attending on a Sunday morning, to call that church. Notice, here's the church, Ephesians 4.16. Here's the church working, the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body to be building up of itself in love. How and where and when do we have that on a Sunday if all we're doing is sit in an auditorium? What we have is a few players, myself and Pastor Greg, and the rest spectators. Where do you see the New Testament church being a spectator sport? It's not there. At what point in our service do we accomplish this? We, we can't. There isn't time. I'm not saying we shouldn't have worship services and it's a part of it. But listen, it's only a part. If all we're doing, again, is coming to church, going home, we are not having church. Church is not a spectator sport. Instead, it's the, the picture of the body working here. And that's what we have here in Ephesians 4, uh, 16. If, listen, if the majority of your body, your physical body, the majority of the parts of your physical body are spectators and just a few parts are working, what are you? You're paralyzed. New Testament church, listen, apart from the working of the body, is paralyzed. It's paralyzed. We have to come together and we have to come together on a more often and more fruitful basis than just a Sunday morning. Something more has to happen. Of course, I'm alluding more to Sunday school, alluding more to small groups and all those things. And we're going to get to that application in just a bit. But again, if all you're doing is attending church, you're not having church. You're just not. We have to be together more than this. We have to be involved in each other's lives. We really do. Nothing in addition to what we call church, we must be more involved together. Again, notice this word steadfastly there in verse 42 applies to all these things. Not only were they steadfastly devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, they were steadfastly devoted to fellowship. Fellowship that you, you hear there in verses 43 through 4, 4 through 46. They were together. They even sold their stuff to take care of each other because they were in such dire straits. They, they, were, they were inviting others to, to live with each other because, because that was the circumstances and the situation. And whatever it needed, they, they were together. 
they were, they were eating together and they were breaking bread together, which is the next thing here, sort of a code term for what we call uh, the Lord's Supper. They did it quite a bit differently than we do. And I don't have a church. We do it one, once a month. And, and the Bible doesn't say, in fact, the Bible just says as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. But these guys were doing it every single day. They were fellowshipping together. What, what we, call, we call the Lord's Supper, we call it communion because that's what it is. Communion, first of all, with God. Jesus has created that communion. It's a celebration of that. It's a remembrance of that. It's also a celebration and remembrance of the communion we have with each other. The community that we have with each other. They were doing this in their houses. And I think it's interesting during this COVID-19 thing, if, if we've had the Lord's Supper, we've had it in our homes. Haven't we? We've, we've had it in small groups. And, and there, there's a lot to be said for that. And not to say that... that you know, it's my individual time in which I take the bread and I take the juice and I remember the body and I remember the blood of Jesus. And yes, that's an individual focus. But when I'm doing it in a large congregation, again, it, 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 the picture here is that they're, they've, they are in a situation where they were fellowshipping, where they were together, where the, the parts of the body could hear the needs of the other parts of the body and that the ministry of the spirit through those parts and through those those gifts could be working. But again, if you've, got a, if you've got a body that most of it isn't working, listen, you've got a paralyzed body. How do we change that? What do we do? We did this daily and uh, house to house, as it says there, they were breaking bread together. So let's draw a, a couple of conclusions here, or maybe one major conclusion here to draw from this, and then we're going to close our time together. Every believer, listen, every believer must be involved in fellowship more than just Sunday morning worship. Every believer must be involved in fellowship more than just Sunday morning worship. I don't just mean, oh, well, you need to come up in church and work. No, I mean, I mean every believer must be involved with other believers in a smaller setting. Sit in a congregation of a couple hundred people and you can be completely anonymous there. And again, that is not church. That is not church. When we come together on a smaller setting, it allows us to know each other. You know me and I know you and I hear your needs and you hear mine. And then again, the fruit of the Spirit and the, the gifts of the Spirit begin to stir among us. And we're into that. We need the body to work, not just a few parts of the body. We need the whole body to work. It requires us to come together on a smaller level, allows the body to do its work and the gifts to get the opportunity to minister and to be ministered to. Someone said this, and I think it's pretty profound. He says, if you aren't connecting small, you aren't connecting at all. If you aren't connecting small, you aren't connecting at all. If you're not getting involved in some small group, it's a home group, a Sunday school group, a uh, start your own. I don't have, I'm not a part of anything. Start one. Well, I don't, I don't know how to lead anything. Listen, just open the Bible and y'all have a discussion together. Pr share, share prayer needs. Invite people over. Again, again we, we got to be careful. So, so find a group that you can trust and, and fellowship. Be together. Again, somebody said, well, we're not having church yet. Well, that's not where it happens anyway. A giant room full of mostly quiet people and a couple of people talking. <laughs> that's not this. That's not this koinonia. Again, uh, we're not going to quit that. I think it's a part, but it's only a part. It should only be a part of what we do. Get involved in each other's lives. Again, we live in a society that's doing the exact opposite. Stay at home, stay behind your computer, stay behind your phone, hide from the world, uh, be uh, anonymous. This is not healthy for the church. In fact, this isn't the church. This isn't the way she works. This isn't what she was created to be. She was created to be in community. What part do you need to play in that? How does your heart need to change on that? I'm going to invite with you, it, you to join me now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift our hearts to you. Lord, we want to be what you've created us to be. You've created it in us in Christ Jesus to be in community with yourself. God, you remove the barrier 
There's nothing but standing between us. There's now have, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We also have peace with each other. You've brought us together. You've taught us how to pray. Our Father. You taught us we're two or more together together. There you'll be in our midst. We so desperately need community. We need the church to be the church. To be in community with each other. And it means she's got to come together. It means she's got to see and be involved uh, with each other. God, I pray that you would take this and place it in our hearts to hear you, to listen to you. Thank you so much, God, for speaking to us today. Thank you for the study of Acts. God, I pray your blessings of it, on it, in the lives of those who hear this, Lord, in the lives of those who are listening and teaching and learning from it. Thank you so much, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thanks for visiting. Find us at www.islandbaptistchurch.org.